Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to this season's anime review. Specifically the uh, spring 2021 recap where I'm going to discuss all of the shows that I watched, what I thought of them, and tell you a little bit about them, I guess. So, if you watched the previous one, you'll know I had like... 30 shows, I think. Let me, let me count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 times 2 would be 28. So that's 29. So I ended up with 29 shows, I believe, that I uh, ended up watching. And oh boy. But, but first, before I get into the uh the shows of this season i gotta say there's there's one show i want to talk about that's not part of the season it's actually an older show that i completely missed and i'm upset that i did at the time um so there's this show there's this anime this may may called kuma 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 bear now if you were to look it up online just typing in Kuma, Kuma, Kuma Bear, and go under, you know, the Google images or something. What you'd see is just a lot of pictures of this girl in a bear suit and um, the, the thumbnail for, like, the actual show itself is basically this girl with, like, these puppet bear hand things with a bunch of what looks like children around her and, a, like couple bears like in a building shape behind her that seems like it's a playground so not knowing anything about it not reading about it just seeing the thumbnail and being like meh i passed by the show when it came out this show is amazing it's an isekai and i did not even fucking realize it and i love isekai but but here's the thing so it was amazing I, I was expecting it to be some weird slice of life, like, oh, this girl just is a bear enthusiast who plays with these kids at a park or something. And uh, not at all how it went. Uh, the first episode really is amazing with uh, how it explains some stuff that happens. Like, she just all of a sudden is fighting this giant snake, kicks its ass, and has these bear powers thanks to this bear suit. And then it just goes insane from there. It's, uh... Got your usual isekai elements, go into another world through unknown means, yada yada. Um, basically, it's uh, an RPG game that she was playing that she got like put into another world with the same like stats and stuff like that, I guess, kind of. She got to put to level one, but has like this overpowered uh, bear suit, which is amazing. And all of her stuff's bear related. Um, it's great. It was a joy to watch. Is not like trying to take itself seriously or anything. Um, at times, it's like a adventure, with like her going around solving like quests and stuff, or fighting monsters. Other times, it's like a slice of life with them going around and you know having fun in town and stuff like that. Um, just an interesting, interesting show. Um, if you're looking for a, a nice little cute isekai that'll lift your spirits, this is definitely it. Now that I've talked about that, let's move on to actual things. This season was bad, in my opinion. There were a lot of shows. Like I said, I watched 28 shows, and there were more out there that were not piquing my interest, like idol shows, or uh, I think there was a Magical Girl show or something that I didn't look into. Just shows that didn't pique my interest. Of the 28 shows, I dropped 1, 2, 3, 4, five six seven eight i dropped eight shows this season at varying points in said shows let me first talk about the dropped shows because we're just gonna plow through them real quick okay so the very first one that i dropped was blue reflection ray and actually we're gonna switch over to kind of a new format you know how you usually, when I would go over a recap, I 
talk about them from like the, the worst to the best and save the best for last. Well, I decided I'm actually going to do it a little differently because this season, to me, to me, was the season of unmemorable shows. I've already forgotten uh, most of the plot for a number of them. I've forgotten many character names already. And, uh, well, I definitely won't remember them here in another couple weeks at all uh, for some of them. Um, with a couple exceptions, of course. There are some good shows, but most of them are just unmemorable nonsense where it's like, whatever. Anyway, I decided to do a tier list this time around because I felt it would be more applicable because everything is like, well, these are all kind of bad. I don't really have a preference for which one's higher than the other. So I just threw together a quick tier list over here. As you can see, I got all the little thumbnails of the shows down below. I got S through D and dropped because dropped is deserving of its own category since I quit them all. Anyway, going on to what I was saying previously, the Blue Reflection Ray show is the first one that I remember dropping. And let me see if I can find the thumbnail. Man, that's going to be half the battle is finding the thumbnails here, huh? Did I not include a thumbnail for it? I swear to God, I did. I had to have. There's no way I did not. Well, anyway. While I look and try to find this thumbnail that may or may not exist, um, Blue Reflection Ray was a magical girl anime. And I got a couple episodes in before I was like, yeah, I like this show. It, uh, the art style was a little weird. And I didn't necessarily enjoy that. And I cannot find the thumbnail for it. <laughs> I don't think it's existing. Yep, I must have not included it. I don't know how. It was definitely in my uh, <clears throat> folder for it. But no matter. Yeah, basically, uh, I couldn't get into it. The animation style felt odd, and the world just kind of felt empty. Because all I think all the background characters were, like, actual background characters. Like, they had no detail to them for the most part. Um, when they were walking around the streets, there was nothing going on. It just felt like an empty world, and I did not enjoy it one bit. The next one I dropped, which I actually have a thumbnail for, is Dragon Goes House Hunting. Now, it was a basically just a slice of life where a dragon is trying to find a place to live after getting kicked out by his parents. A weird premise, yeah. But the dragon's a whiny little loser who keeps crying and he's not strong and he's like I want to find a place that's fine and so this demon lord or whatnot shows him around to different places and it's basically each show is like showing him a different house essentially um, I couldn't get into it I watched the first couple episodes and I was like nah not for me not for me but uh yeah my main my main gripe with it was I did not like the dragon crying all the time and being a, a weirdo next up we have another one that I dropped, which is, if I can find it here, I know I saw it before, this one right here, Shaman King. I, uh, I dropped this like a sack of bricks. I watched the first, like, three episodes because everyone's like, oh my god, they're remaking Shaman King, it's gonna be great. It was not great. I, uh, I never saw the first one, but uh, what I saw of this one, I did not like. The entire show seemed to boil down to, hey, let's fight in this roadway in the middle of the town. And that's that's literally what happened the first three episodes I watched. There was always a fight with them standing in the middle of the road with no one else around using these crazy powers. And yeah. Um, also, the characters' proportions are weird. Like the main characters have like huge like, it's the old like uh, the, the DK thing back in like uh, Nintendo 64 when you get all like DK heads when you put in cheats and have just huge heads um, and like small like thin rail like bodies but there's other people who have like normal bodies which makes no sense and then there's this little shit character called Manta or Manta or whatever the hell his name is who's just annoying and honestly if he was removed from the show it would have been so much better because all he does is whine, complain get in the way, be annoying like, if he was out of the show, you would not miss him. I, uh, I watched the last episode that I watched, which was, like, episode three or four, and I just ignored everything Manta said, and he literally added no substance at all to the show. 
Like, nothing of value was added or lost from him uh, talking. So, useless. Very useless. Not for me. Next one I quit was um, Joran, the Princess of Snow and Blood. I thought this was going to be cool. But it was, it was too odd for me. So what, what ended up happening is um, they killed off the main character's revenge goal like episode 5 or 6. Um, and then in like the next episode, they basically run away scot-free and there's like no repercussions at that point. And that would have just been like an excellent place to end it. Um, and that's why I stopped watching at episode 6 and didn't continue watching past that. The animation was okay, but this, the story didn't really like grip me or pull me in to want to continue watching past episode 6 when literally everything that was a major conflict had gotten wrapped up at that particular moment in time. Um, so there was just no reason to continue watching. Yeah. The next one I dropped was Gloomy, the Naughty Grizzly. Um... <laughs> It might be odd that I dropped this show, considering that each episode is less than a minute long, because there's the intro, there's the credits, which take up like 30 minutes, 30 seconds, and the actual content is like 30 seconds or less of content. Um, they weren't that good. You can basically summarize the show by this algorithm. Boy does something with the bear. Bear mauls the boy. Like in the first one, he... Uh, Gave him some food, the food ran out, the bear mauled the boy. In the second one, the boy made, or bought a, a toy for the grizzly. Boy played with bear, bear mauled boy. It, it's literally just the bear mauling the boy. That's all it is. That's all the show is. I didn't want to waste any more of my precious minutes watching it. The next one I dropped was... Do I not have a picture for this one? What? Wow. I did bad at this, didn't I? Fuck. I swear to God, I just copied all of them in. Maybe yeah, there's a limit to how many you can have in here or something. I don't know. Anyway, the next one I quit was um, Battle Athletes. Was the, the anime? Um, I forget the entire name of it. It's like a remake of a, like an old... I think it was a 90s or like 80s anime or something like that. It seemed fairly generic. Um, basically, these girls are competing to become a Miss Cosmo or something. Some ruler or queen, but you find out very quickly that she's actually a puppet. And there's like this one scene where one of the characters you find out is the one who's supposed to win because the game was rigged from the start, basically. And she was... She's been trained and like given enhancements and shit like that to actually win and there's like these three like jerk loser guys who are the uh like ringmasters of all this and she comes in front of them and basically they just tell her to strip down and you can tell she doesn't want to do it and they're just like being really gross about the whole like making her strip down and inspecting her naked body kind of thing it's fucked up and uh, at that point, I was like, huh, well, I wonder when the next time this is going to happen is going to be. And uh, it just put me on edge because I was like, God damn it, I don't want to see this stupid shit happen again. Um, yeah. I don't like sports in general, so them doing the sports stuff where it was like running or gliding, doing weird boat stuff, wasn't into it. Yeah. It seemed kind of interesting at the beginning. The animation was clean, but uh, not in for me. Although there were a lot of very good close-ups on their butts with, like, skin-tight outfits, like leotards and shit like that, which was, uh, good. But then again, after that one scene, I just could not, I could not wait anymore with that show. Next one, I quit. It was, I don't think I have this thumbnail either. I don't know what the fuck happened to all the dropped thumbnails that I have. It's, uh, it's Yusuke, the Black Samurai. I think it's a Netflix original show. Um, I was expecting this to be something cool like uh, Afro Samurai. Because I think it was made by, or like written by the person who made Black, or uh, not Black Samurai, uh, 
Afro Samurai or something, I think. I was thinking, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought it was going to be semi-historically accurate about, uh, you know, a black samurai, a cool show um, of that stuff kind of happening. Holy shit, was I wrong. First episode. Mechs. Magic. Crazy shit happening. Um, I gave it, like, two episodes, and that's that's all I could do. Because after that, it was, like, just more insane after more insane after more insane. And I was like, ha, 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 not for me, hard pass. And so I, uh, I stopped. And that was that. Next one is Mars Red that I dropped. And apparently I also don't have a thumbnail for that one. Excellent. God, I'm unprepared. <laughs> Mars Red, I got like episode 8. And then I stopped. Um, I don't remember any of the characters' names. And everything was kind of bland and generic about it. It was the um, vampire anime of the season. Where... Uh, it was centered around the Japanese government wanting to make a vampire military force and finding vampires in the country to either join or to kill them if they refuse to join. Um, it, there didn't seem to be like a real concrete goal of what the show wanted to accomplish in the first eight episodes. Um, it was basically, yeah, we're just a, a vampire fighting force. We're going to go fight zombies or fight vampires, I mean. And uh, that was all that happened. Like towards the the end of what I watched, stuff kind of happened, and I got really confused because there was like a like uh, it felt like a time jump almost with weird stuff happening. And then I was like, yeah. And every day I uh, I saw it come up in my you know oh this episode's out. I was like, uh, is it though? <laughs> Can I not watch this? And so I just dropped it. And uh, that's how that went. But yeah. Now then, on to the shows I actually finished. And, you know, uh, I guess semi-enjoyed. Because if I watched them completion, I at least enjoyed them a little bit. First one I want to talk about is uh, the Gundam uh, Hathaway's Flash movie. Uh, it's in D tier. It was awful. It was bad. Apparently, there is... Uh, it's the first in a three-part series of movies for Gundam Hathaway's Flash. Uh, the first movie was about an hour and 30 minutes. So I watched it, and it didn't really have much Gundam action that I was expecting. There was some at, like, the end, like the last 20 minutes there was Gundams. Um, but it was more like a setup and an introduction to the characters than anything. Uh, and getting to know who's who and what's what of what was kind of going on. Um, it didn't feel very... It didn't grip my attention, basically, is what I want to say. Yeah. I will check out the next ones, the next movies when they come out, whenever they come out. Um, it's probably not going to be for a while, is what it sounds like. Sounds like it's going to be like a year or two before the next movies come out, which... Oof. Maybe they're going to just get cancelled. I don't know. We'll see. The way that I uh, thought that one went. Didn't go very good. Now then. Next up, we have um, Cestus, the, the Roman fighter. I don't know if I pronounced his name right. It's uh, basically about uh, like Roman-era boxing with the Roman Empire. Yeah, yeah. Centers around this slave named Cestus, and he uh, basically has to fight for his life. And if he loses a match, he's disposed of, is what his original master said. And then basically it's him being trained to fight as a boxer, to, you know, fight in a battles to earn money for his current master and uh i i thought it was gonna go longer than it did because the end is like the end of this like semi-final tournament to get into a uh, actual like rome like the coliseum fight i think it was to like have this boxing tournament which would have ne inevitably given him his freedom but it ended kind of right there yeah Anyway, um, I didn't like the art style. It was the, uh, the gross, like, CGI, CG nonsense where it's like, it's trying to be real, 
by like exaggerating movements and having people move around a lot and it doesn't need to do that like there was one episode where they said something like one character said something and then their head just kept moving like bobbing up and down and i was like dude just stop just stop it just have his head stop moving it's, it's like it just felt unnecessary to animate like that continuing to go like that and that's that's the one thing i don't like about cg and how it's handled they like over animate i feel like or they make it too sluggish or it's just weird granted in this show the fighting scenes were pretty well done i'm not gonna lie that's probably why i continued to watch it even though i don't really like boxing or the animation style in general um but it it felt pretty decent but very forgettable because I'm not going to remember it at all. I don't know if they're expecting a second season, but I'm probably not going to watch it if there is one. <laughs> all right. Next up, we have a uh, who? An an interesting. Hold on. Let, let me actually change the order of what I was going to go through here. So over the course of this season. I had changed around my numbered list of like, this show's good, this show's bad, um, this is what the, the rankings are, and it just flipped around so much, and that's why I decided to do this tier list, because I was like, these could both be number seven, for example. Um, and I just couldn't bring myself to do much else, other than put them in tiers. Uh, so going forward, in C tier, we have this show, which I'm actually surprised about. It's an isekai. So I thought it would have been higher. And I was expecting something totally different from Killing Slimes for 300 years. I forget the rest of the name. Basically, it's about a uh, character or a girl who gets isekai and she's immortal. And so she just ends up killing slimes for 300 years. And... Um, yeah, it's apparently just a slice of life. There's not really much action, so if you're looking for, like, oh, she's a badass who is going to go fight the demon lord or something like that, this ain't your show. If you're looking for a cute girl doing cute things with other cute girls um, with, like, some comedy and some, like, fights that last all of, like, a second, um, this is your show. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting to be most slice of life kind of thing. Um, as far as slice of life shows go, though, it didn't really stand out besides being in a fantasy world. And it also didn't really feel like it ended. It just kind of ends abruptly without any, like, story wrapping up or anything. Not that it actually had, like, an overarching story or anything being slice of life. It just seemed odd how they ended it. It made it seem like there was more episodes coming. So I, I like, opened it up next week and I was like, huh. Nope, there's not another episode. Well, interesting. The characters were okay, not memorable. You had a generic blonde protagonist with long hair and blue eyes. You had a generic blonde elf with long hair who was ditzy and had large tits. You had the two twin loli sisters. You had a dragon maid cosplay thing. Um, you had a white-haired demon lady. V very generic, and I don't remember <laughs> any of their names already, and it's only been like two weeks. Yeah, definitely going to forget about this anime uh, here, at least as this next season goes by. Next, we have The World Ends With You sitting at C tier. And, uh, man, this show was confusing? But interesting? I don't know. It was kind of interesting. It, it was about basically these death games with, like, Reapers. Um, essentially, this kid died somehow. You don't know how. He has amnesia, so he doesn't know. And he ends up in this game world, which is like the, uh, the, the underworld, which is or like the underground or something like that. I forget the exact name of it. Anyway, it's like um, he's in the same plane of existence as the real world however he can't interact with the people from the real world he can like touch them and like hear their inner thoughts but that's all that it happens with um and so you have to pair up with another person who's also in the death game 
and then you gain these abilities to fight back against the thing called noise, which the Reapers use to try and kill you. And if you die, you die for real, and you're out of the game. Um, and that's how it goes. Basically, they have like seven days to live, or to, yeah, to live to win the game. At the end of the seven days, they fight a boss, and if they defeat the boss who put the game together, they win. They also have missions each day with like a countdown timer, and if they pass the mission, they move on. If they fail the mission, they get deleted right away. That's how it goes. Apparently, it's based on a game. Um, I didn't understand it. It, it. Things happen that I didn't understand. It's very unmemorable. Um, I don't understand how or why some things happened. And I really don't understand the main character's abilities. Because everyone else has, like, one ability. Like, they can, uh... Like, one girl controls this, like, bear puppet that, like, has, like, claw attacks kind of thing, right? The main character, he can use fire. He can use lightning. He can, um, create a shield. He can apparently use ice, I think, he used at one point. He has a lightning that he can use. Like, just... A ton of different abilities. And I'm like, what? How? Why? Huh? It's not explained at all. Um, the ending was okay. But other than that, I... I've already forgotten much about the show. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Which... Is a really slow burn called To Your Eternity. It's kind of interesting. But a slow burn, like I said. So towards the beginning, you're left with just a bunch of questions about what the hell is going on and as uh, like arcs happen because there's like th the main character is essentially this like immortal being that just exists that's all you that's all you know he starts out as a rock and then a wolf walks over and dies next to the rock and then the rock becomes a wolf and then roams around until he finds a human and then he like basically assumes the the life of the wolf who was this boy's uh like pet wolf and so they like do things together and whatnot and you find out that this boy is like the the only one in his village and this is all first episode shit so it's not like spoilers or anything and uh long story short the boy like has stuff happen and y you find out that the uh, the main character he uh has abilities that are able to do things. <clears throat> That's a very try to spoiler free thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna close my eyes here, okay? And I'm just gonna tell you about some spoilers to better explain what's going on. So essentially, the main character, the immortal being thing, he can just like summon things. Um, like he can make uh, like spears and stuff if they impact his life in some way. Like when something dies next to him he can assume their form. So the boy dies, and he becomes the boy. Um, and other things die, and he can become them as well. Or like, a, he gets hit by a spear, for example, and he can just create spears now out of his body. He basically shapeshifts and transforms and stuff. It's weird. <coughs> anyway, opening up my eyes, no more spoilers. Um, it really didn't feel like much of a show until around halfway, like the final arc that the story covers, at least for me currently, because I think it's still an ongoing show. Um, I want to mention that. So I have not seen the ending. There's apparently 20 episodes, and I'm only 13 episodes in currently. But uh, basically, he meets this boy named Gugu, and that's when it actually seems like it has a story and a plot to it. Like, that's the first time that anything actually exists, that there's actually a goal, that there's actually, like relationships forming and stuff like that and it actually gets good at that point to me so that's how it goes next up let's talk about um Irma-kun Welcome to Demon School 2 which uh we beat here yeah so this one it's a continuation of another uh See another anime, another season, I guess. This is season two of Welcome to Demon School, Irma-kun, basically. And it's more of the same. The first, like, couple episodes I did not like because of one of the characters in him was annoying. Uh, but after that, it's basically more of the same. 
It's a really fun kind of slice of life, interesting show where uh, if you've not seen it, it's about a human who is sold to a demon to be the demon's grandson. And so the human, who's like a 14-year-old kid, ends up attending the demon school and trying to hide the fact that he's a human because if he's found out, he thinks that he'll be eaten and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's been pretty decent. Uh, I think we're at, like, episode... I don't want to open that up here. We're at episode something or other, okay? And, uh... Yeah. So far, it's been entertaining. I definitely liked it. Okay. Moving on. We got... The rom-com where the childhood friend will not lose. And that is the show here, which is going to be in a B tier. Um, so at first, the show was kind of cringy and embarrassing, like secondhand embarrassment kind of stuff. Um, but it got better after episode five. The characters aren't very memorable, I will say that. Um, there's this one girl um, who's one of the main characters. She has long black hair, and she looks almost identical to any any anime character with long black hair. Um, I, I actually looked up one character that I know of. Um, there's this uh, there's this anime called Senka Rei or something like that, and uh, I know the character Rei. Rhea, or whatever her name is from that show, has long black hair, has a flower in her hair, and has, like, the same colored eyes, I think, as the black-haired main character in this show. And uh, they're identical. I, like, if you showed me a picture of them, like, two months from now, I'd be like, yeah, they're the same character, basically. Um, down to the fact that this character, sh this, this show's character, she has a flower in her hair, just like Rhea from Sanka Rhea. Weird shit. It, it's insane. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, the reason the childhood friend won't lose? Well, let me tell you. It's because everyone's a fucking childhood friend. The title has no meaning. So, it's your, it's your classic, like, romantic comedy. Um, but with, like, a, a weird spin where the, the main character was a child actor... And he, like, has two girls that he really likes. And then a third comes in later. And um, it's just a bunch of relationship drama nonsense where they all love each other, basically. But, like, the main character is an indecisive loser. And the girls are fighting over him. And yada, yada, yada. And um, all that good stuff. But the thing is, all the female love interests for the main character are all childhood friends. One he grew up with. One he knew back when he was acting, one he uh, played with when he was young while he was acting, and they all kind of like drifted apart after that point, except for his one childhood friend who stayed with him. But like, they're all childhood friends. So no matter who he picks, the childhood friend doesn't lose because they're all childhood friends. That's the thing. That's what this show is, okay? Um, the ending for the season is awful. It, it's horrible. It's like even worse than most open-ended harem anime where the guy never makes a choice. Because, like, he just doesn't make a choice. Like, there's, there's no gain on anyone. It's basically you can, like, restart the show and it'd be the same thing. Because it's like, oh, yeah, we all, we all gained ground. Yay. No one, like, it was literally just the entire show was him, like, spending some time with the girls, blushing, being like, damn, I love her. And like, damn, I love her. And like, damn, I love her. And like, come on, bro. Like, at least grow closer to one of them or something. I don't know. But, uh... Essentially, as the story drags on, it feels more like the main character is trying to overcome his past trauma than it is with romance. Like, it seems more about a show, about the character trying to overcome a past trauma, than it does a romance show. Um, that's what it, it seemed like to me, at least, anyway. Moving on. Uh... Also in B tier, we have Seven Nights Revolution. Seven Nights Revolution is apparently based on a game, and it's about these kids who have powers that fight against the threat to humanity. So it's a very, very familiar plot that very generic in anime. 
Basically, kids have powers. They fight monster enemy things. Yada, yada. Nothing really stood out to me about the show or the characters. Everything's rather forgettable. The designs are really bland. There's, like, nothing that I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to remember that character forever. Like in some shows where it's like, I can remember a character, but not necessarily anything about the show they came from. Yeah. The ending was okay. Um, definitely ended weird. Got a, got a little weird at the end, but it ended okay, in my opinion, compared to some other stuff and how the story progressed. Um, it, it's about these kids who are fighting uh, this, like, demon creature that's attacking the world who got sealed away a long time about heroes and they have like heroes that they can like call to get power and so they they gain the hero's power to fight against the enemy creatures and uh, yeah that's essentially what it boils down to it's not the greatest show but if you're looking for something that has some action that you can watch then that's your thing yeah all right Moving on, we have Vivi, Fluorite Eve's song, which is also going to be in B tier. This one was an interesting show. Um, it was about AI, and basically two AI team up to try and stop a future where AI massacre humanity. Um, quite literally, the first episode is AIs just start massacring people. Um, they just start like running them over or like beating them to death. There's these little cubes that fly around in the sky that just like blast down, hit someone in the head and just fucking kill them. It is insane. Um, but it's a nice and interesting blend of like music and combat and action. Cause the, uh, the main character of uh, Vivi or uh, Diva, as she's also known, she's a songstress AI. Basically she's programmed to sing and make people happy is what her, her mission is. And all AIs have this mission that they're supposed to complete, and hers is to basically make people happy through her singing. And so her dream or her goal is to go to, like, a bigger stage and make more people happy. And, uh, yeah. So this, uh, this other robot, whose name is Matsumoto, I think his name was? He's like a small cube, flying cube, who gets sent back by a scientist in the future to try and stop a chain of events that they determined are probably the cause of the AIs going insane and killing humanity. Basically, uh, it's essentially like the humans and the AI had a couple of things that caused their uh, um, differences to like go out of control. Like the AIs were like blamed for killing things or like the AI uh, was seen to like love another AI and so this kind of stuff had to be stopped and they uh, had one where it was like technology was growing too rapidly so they wanted to like curb how quickly technology was going up for the AIs and stuff like that um yeah but uh, essentially that, that's the story and I, I'm kind of unsatisfied with the ending of how it ended because it was kind of sad it didn't really do what I feel like it intended to, to do. Like, the, their goal to prevent the massacre, it, it didn't play out exactly how I thought it was going to play out. And it felt more like Diva or Vivi, whichever one you want to call her, like actually becoming a proper songstress and stuff like that is what it felt like happened. And there was like, there's huge time leaps in the show, so it can be kind of confusing at times. But uh, it, it's got some good action. It's got decent music. Um, all in all, it's a pretty okay show. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Moving on. We have Godzilla Singular Point, also in B tier. Now, Godzilla Singular Point, it's Godzilla. I don't know what more you need to know about it. But anyway, it's focused more on the people instead of the monsters. So the main characters are fighting against some you know, Godzilla stuff with robots while one is, like, researching how to, like, stop it and stuff like that. Shit happens. It's interesting. And it ends decently enough. And it's kind of confusing throughout the story because there's, like, some, some time leaps as stuff progresses because it's mostly just, like, them either repairing a robot 
or researching things, and that's why the time jumps happen. So I can understand it, but it's got some pretty decent action with like the uh, the robot fighting the like Godzilla spawns, like the little pterodactyl things that are in the show. Um, it's anime Godzilla. <laughs> it's it's okay. I liked it. The ending was cool. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next one. We have How Not to Summon a Demon Lord, Season 2, which is B tier. Season 1 would have been like A tier. But uh, it, Season 2 is all the, the pervy, weird, sh like, harem stuff that you liked, but with new waifus added. And some old ones kept as well. Honestly, the, the roster of the show, of the waifus in the show, are getting way too much. There's like 10, 15 of them now, I think. It's just insane. In my opinion, though, it, it fell flat compared to season one. And it was only 10 episodes long, so it felt like a huge fucking ripoff to me. Like, they didn't even make it 12 episodes. They were just like, eh, 10, good enough. Show's over. Bye. I mean, it ended okay, but I don't know. I just remember season one being a lot more, like, dramatic and entertaining, whereas this one was kind of bland. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. Next up, we have... Let's go with Combatants Will Be Dispatched. So this one is a small blonde woman named Alice. She's the reason I watched it. She's the reason I like it. The rest of the show can go to hell. <laughs> um, it was an okay show, um, but the whole reason I picked it up and I was like, yep, I, I want to watch this show is because there was a, a small blonde woman with a shotgun on the cover. And if you, if you know me, I like small blonde women like Yami or Golden Darkness from Tula Vru. Yue from Arta Fretta, the from World Strongest or from Commonplace to World Strongest, that show. Um, I think Eve from Black Cat, and now Alice from Combatants Will Be Dispatched. Uh, basically, give me a long hair, blonde girl, and I'm in. Okay. Uh, the main character at first, I really hated him because he was like just a huge perv and like a douchebag. He got a little bit better. But he was still not cool. I did not like him. The other characters really helped a lot. Like, if they weren't there, the, the show would have been awful. Um, Alice needed a lot more screen time because she did not get very much. She needed, like, triple the screen time that she got. All in all, it's a very simple show. Uh, not a whole lot going on for it. Completely unmemorable, and the only reason I will remember it is because of Alice. But uh, it was essentially... This guy works for a criminal organization. He gets sent to a new planet because they're almost done conquering their current planet. And he's basically the vanguard to get a foothold there and set up a teleporter so they can invade that world. And so he basically joins the a kingdom in the new world to like fight as a guard to like get information from them and like get money and resources to build a teleporter. And shit happens, they fight demons, they fight a kingdom. Another kingdom, it's it's a it's a mess. <laughs> to be honest, it's uh mostly comedy. It's got some good waifus in it though. I will say that, like Alice. All right, let me look at the ones we have left here. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Hmm. We're almost into A tier territory. All right. Next, we have the Slime Diaries, which is. It's like another season of the time I was reincarnated as a slime, except not. I'm pretty sure a different animation studio worked on it. And it's like a side story to the main story. Because this happens, it happens like between season one and two, I think. From what it seems like. Because Rimuru, um, if you haven't seen season two yet, becomes a demon lord in season two. And he's not yet a demon lord. Um, so, yeah, it... It's essentially a slice-of-life version of Reincarnate as a Slime that just centers around Rimuru and his daily life in the village or in the, in the town of uh, Tempest or whatnot. That's literally all there is to it. 
It has a much cuter style than the normal show. Everyone looks cuter and slightly different in the grand scheme of things. Like Rimuru, it's a lot harder to tell if he's a guy or a girl. He looks more like a girl, and they put him in cosplay a couple of times. Um, the female characters look a lot cuter. The male characters look a lot hotter. And the old man character looks a lot less scary and a lot more like just uh, an old man, kind of. The, the one Oni guy who uh, trains people and scares the shit out of them. But yeah, he's a lot more cutesy than anything. But, in the grand scheme of things, of a slice of life anime, there are better ones out there. This one was a good time waster and decent enough to continue watching. Um, it didn't really have any sort of like subplot or anything. It was literally just random stuff happening. Seasons go by, they went to the beach in one episode, they had uh, a Christmas party in one episode, uh, they planted a farm in one episode. It's literally just time goes by. That's all that happens. That's all. Yeah. Anyway, Season 2's Part 2 comes out this season. Woo! Yeah, that's the fall season. Or, or the summer season, not the spring season. FYI. So I'm real excited for that because it's going to happen in two days from me recording this. And we're going to see more Demon Rimuru killing more people, hopefully. Yeah! Anyway. Moving on. Also, in B tier, we have this show, which is, uh, I, I forget the whole name of it, but it's like full dive VR. Um, essentially, uh, damn it, I should have wrote the name down better. Uh, it, it's, it's a full dive VR game, okay? Basically, this kid, he uh, gets a full dive VR thing and he buys this game that this chick like totally rips him off on by the way and uh he goes into it plays it and it's a shitty game that's literally the concept of it it's a shitty game and he's playing it um it has its ups and downs but for like the the simple lunacy of it all it, it scores fairly high um the ending was actually really hype but hella unsatisfying i wish there was more of it like, if there was a second season, I'd watch it. Because the ending started to get really good. The beginning kind of falls flat. Um, but like Every episode was better than the last one. It definitely started gaining traction. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, the second, or the ending, hella lackluster. But it kind of sets up for a second season. And I really hope there is one. Because I really want to watch more of it. Because, like... A lot of stuff happens in the last episode that is, like, setting up for the next episode. But you don't have another episode to continue on. Uh, but yeah, basically the, the story of the game is you need to leave the town. That's all it is. And for the entire show, he stays in the town. Because um, it's a very hard, realistic RPG. If you get hurt, you get hurt. You feel pain. Um, healing takes actual time. Like, you can't just drink a potion and you're healed. Uh, the healing items are literally, like, herbs and, like, healing plants that you wrap around your arm or something to heal with. Um, your stats carry over from real life, so if you're, like, a, an out-of-shape person, you're going to be out of shape in the game. But if you know, like, martial arts, you can use that in the game. That's how it goes. And uh, it, it's an interesting show. Very interesting, and I enjoyed it. For the most part. Like I said, the beginning was kind of rough, but it, it kept getting better and better. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Now then. I think... I think we're in the last B tier. Which would be this one. This is 86. An aptly named show, because it centers around a group of people known as the 86, essentially. Um, it's got good action, decent story, it's wild and interesting story, uh, but it's fairly unmemorable, unfortunately. Towards the end, I was expecting a, an insane plot twist, but it just never happened. Um, the ending really was awful, just god-awful. Um, it was really bittersweet, there's no closure given at all for, like, anything, and it really bummed me out. 
because like the whole the whole series you're rooting for these people you're seeing them like die and get like fucked up and you're seeing uh, one of the main characters try her hardest to support the other main characters and just nothing pays off if you're looking for a show that pays off this ain't it okay not to spoil or anything else but um yeah essentially there is a kingdom that is or like a, a country i should say i don't know if it's a kingdom for sure um that is in a constant state of war because their enemy who surrounded them um had these like artificial intelligence tanks essentially like these spider tank things and they went rogue of course and the enemy countries destroyed but the enemy country's tanks still exist and are still coming to kill them so what had happened is the group of people known as 86 are everyone every single person who was part of the kingdom who did not have like flowing white silver hair and like silver eyes is basically no longer human so only the silver-haired, silver-eyed people are human. Everyone else, they call pigs. And they are put into, like, these really old, archaic-looking spider mechs to fight against the enemy. And they're basically sent out to die. That's the entire, like, show of what happens. And the main character, uh, whose name I forget, the, the actual, like, white-haired one... Um, because the white-haired people control or, like, give orders to the 86 who are, like, all different races and colored hair and all that kind of stuff and uh, all that. And she's kind of their handler to give them instructions and whatnot. And she's trying to, like, help them because she knows that they're actually people and not just pigs because she actually was outside the walls of the, uh, the main kingdom town, I guess at some point and like actually knows the truth and she's trying to make everyone else realize the truth and realize that they're all assholes for being like yeah there was no casualties uh today because they aren't human and only humans show up as casualties so despite the fact that the 86 are constantly dying the kingdom reports zero casualties and no one dies yep that's how it goes it's, uh, it's really fucked up but uh, it, it's got really good action scenes it's really touching at times, and sucks at the end. Yeah. If there is a second season, I will watch it, because I'm hoping that things will play out better. But if you're looking for a happy ending, this ain't it right now. This ain't it at all. Okay. Moving on. First up, I'm going to talk about Eden Zero. So Eden Zero is literally fairy tale in space, space, space. I think it's made by the same people who do fairy tale. The yeah. animation style is pretty much the same anyway. Um, and the characters are basically the same as well. They're, they're literally clones, almost, of the major fairy tale characters. Like, I'd say Shiki is kind of like Grey uh, from fairy tale. Rebecca is basically Lucy. Um, there, there's a character named, uh, like, Elsie Crimson or something like that, who is literally Urza Scarlet. Like, they're the same character. It's just their name is, like, different slightly. Like, the uh, yeah, like I said. Um, also, that, that blue cat named Happy from Fairy Tale. Guess what? There's a blue cat named Happy who looks exactly the same. Yep. And, uh, oddly enough, in the first episode, I think, maybe it's the second, uh, Lucy and Natsu from Fairy Tale actually make an appearance, uh, like in the background of the main characters of Eden Zero. Um, but essentially, Eden Zero is Fairy Tale in space. Basically, it's about the characters making friends, getting stronger. And going on adventures in space. That's how it goes. Uh, the basic plot, after watching a number of episodes in, I forget which one I'm on, um, 
they get a ship called Eden Zero, and they have to find these four pillars, I think they were called, about uh, these, like, android women who, like, run the ship. Like, one of them is a healer, one of them is the defensive of the ship, one of them is, like, an anti-hacker who, like, keeps the systems of the ship running, one of them is, like, a... Just, uh, offense like there's offense defense healing and then hacking i think is the main is the four of them right and they, they find that to go on a journey to find mother who will apparently grant your wish if you can find her in the universe and she's like this giant like goddess like alien kind of thing that's the the plot of it essentially it's quite interesting and uh i'm wondering how long it's going to be because it doesn't seem like it's going to be a uh a normal length show because it's still ongoing from the time I'm currently recording this. I don't think it's going to be like a simple 12 episode thing, but uh, it's interesting. So we'll see how that goes. Nodder, nodder. Next up, my God, we have. Uh, let's see, which one should I talk about next here? Let's talk about Pretty Boy Detectives. So. I think the actual name is Pretty Boy Detective Club. Um, the Pretty Boy Detective Club has three rules. Be a boy, be pretty, and be a detective. I think those are the three rules they have. I'm thinking, I think there might be a fourth one. I just don't remember what it is. Um, anyway, it's really cute. Um, I, did, I did not expect to actually like watch this show and enjoy it. But the art style is fucking amazing. Even though 90% of the characters are all guys, um, it's adorable and intriguing. And I could not stop it. Like, I was like, oh, it's, it's like gonna, it's gonna be a reverse harem kind of thing. Uh, Cause there's like a, a female character right at the beginning and she meets all these handsome, cute guys and whatnot. And it was not, it blew me away with like the story and the art style and like everything else that happened with it. Like it is batshit insane. And there are art style shifts as it like does things to like emphasize certain aspects, which is insane. And there's like close ups that just like really stand out. And it, what I'm trying to say is watch this damn show because Holy shit. I cannot do it justice. But the different art styles really add, like, this interesting feel to it. Um, and at the end, it was really great. It ended on a very nice note. And there's, like, different mysteries that they solve throughout it. Yeah. Also, it has two amazing waifus in the show. And who does not like waifus. Like, I'm talking, look, if you look at the fucking, like, thumbnail for this show and you think the boys are cute, bruh, bruh, wait until you see one of the villains. She is fucking amazing. She is, like, mommy territory hot. Oh, man. Like, I saw her and I was like, God damn. But I could not, unfortunately, find good artwork of her, um, just in general. Like, I was just trying to find a, a normal picture of her to, like, see what she looked like better in reference. But I could just find, like, shadowy, like, pictures of her from the show. Ah, oh, it's awful. Anyway, it's a great show. Check it out. Um, you will be entertained. And if you like cute boys, you're definitely going to love it as well. Hell yeah. All right. Moving on to the next one which is the saint's magic power is omnipotent. It's essentially an isekai with reverse harem elements. Two girls are summoned to be saints in this, uh, this fantasy world. The main character gets shunned by the prince because she's older and kind of plain looking and is basically allowed to just do whatever she wants. Um, so she ends up helping with the, uh, like, the, a potion academy, essentially, making potions and doing herbology and stuff like that. And, uh, oh yeah, she becomes the saint, by the way. 
Um, it, it's basically a romance with slice of life things on top, and it has a little bit of action in there as well. Um, the ending was okay, but it wasn't great. It, it fit the it fit the theme, but I was expecting it to be a little bit different. Um, essentially, it's the the main character say she does things in a slice of life manner, like making potions, learning about her powers and magic, learning about herbs. Um, Getting closer with all the hot guys who are in there, falling in love with one of the hot guys, and uh, learning about the saint's power and becoming the saint and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very cute, very interesting show. Um, very nice. Definitely check it out if Isekai and or Reverse Harem are on your list. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Next up, <clears throat> we have. One of the shows that I knew I would like, we have It's Too Sick to Call This Love. So this is a really cute show about an older guy and a girl in high school falling in love over time. Basically, <laughs> the long and short of it. It's pretty adorable as you watch the characters fumble along with their feelings for each other. And uh, it ended well and had a kiss. So if you're tired of anime, that are romances that don't have a kiss at the end. Fear not, this one will satiate your desire and you will see a kiss at the end. You'll actually get rewarded for your fucking patience watching it. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, they have a fateful encounter and then another fateful encounter and then the guy basically falls in love with the girl and uh, kind of pursues her really relentlessly, almost to the point of stalking, almost, and she eventually like decides she likes him back and that's the show essentially. It's really cute. Check it out. It's a very good romance, I think. Next, we have I shaved, and then I brought a high school girl home. Also A tier. This show was an emotional roller coaster and fucked me up for a week in fear of the next episode. Like, Oh my god. There was one week for the ending of one episode, I was like, no! No! And I was like, I don't wanna... I was so nervous about the next episode and how it would go. I was just like, bruh, don't, don't play it out bad, please. Um, but luckily, the drama from that last episode in the very next episode was all wrapped up in a bow, nice and tightly, and... Everything was alleviated. Oh. Which, for any of you watching it now, if you do go on to watch it, you won't have to worry about because you can just binge watch the damn thing. You don't have to wait a week in agony being like, no, I don't want this to happen. You know, stuff like that. Anyway, <clears throat> similar to the previously mentioned one, it's too sick to call this love, I shaved and brought a high school girl home is about a 26-year-old businessman who brings a high school girl home and they start living together. Um... I think the girl's, like, 17. If that matters at all to y'all. Um, it's got some fucked up themes, but it's it's mostly cute. Okay? It, it feels like a romance to me. But without actual romance happening. So it's mostly drama, in my opinion. There, there's there's the, the romance elements happen, but it's mostly just drama occurring. And uh, I, I was really, really hoping for a different ending. Like... I kept playing scenarios as it was, like, going on about, like, okay, this could happen, they could do this, they could do this. None of it happened. None of it happened, and I was left very unsatisfied with how the ending went, but in the grand scheme of things and how things occurred throughout the show and the main characters and how they handled each other and did things with each other, it, it made sense. I understand why they ended it the way they did and not the ways that I wanted it to end. Yeah. This one was, if you remember my, uh, my my first discussion about this season's anime, the one that I was going to watch, and my first little, these seem interesting, video. Um, this was one that I was like, high hopes, this is going to be an amazing show, best of the season. Essentially, well, I liked it, but it didn't get there, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but essentially, it's about a girl named Sayu, 
and a guy whose name I forget because I never remember the guy's names because I don't care. Um, the guy basically finds Sayu under a street lamp. He's drunk, so he brings her home, and because she, she's like by herself and is like, "You could take me home with you," blah blah blah, and he's like, "Whatever," and like she's like, "I'll I'll sleep with you if you let me stay with you," and he's like, "No, just come home." Because she's like, if, if you don't let me in, I'll just find another guy to sleep with tonight or something like that. And so being the, the kind and like nice, normal person that this guy is, he's like, hey, I'm drunk. Come home. You can just stay the night and whatnot. And so they go home. And right away, she tries to like sleep with him, to like seduce him and whatnot. And he's like, hey, fuck off. I'm not into kids. And just passes out. Um, and then as their, like, relationship develops, she, she keeps trying to, like, sleep with him because she, she ran away from home. And you find out pretty quickly that she has been sleeping with guys, um, as payment, essentially, for letting them, or for letting her stay with them, uh, which is really fucked up, and it's, oof, comes back to bite them in the ass a little later which is why I got a little whew, at that one point I was like oh fuck it's not cool um but yeah all in all it uh it's it's basically about the guy telling Sayu stop being an idiot and using your body like that have some self-respect be like a normal person you need to learn how to take care of yourself and handle things better and like essentially raising her like a daughter um they uh, eventually kind of, like, get feelings for each other. And uh, stuff happens, but they, they don't actually kiss. They don't do any, like, romantic stuff. They don't sleep together, despite Sayu constantly being like, hey, let's fuck. And the guy's like, no. Um, so, yeah. It's more of, like, a, a fatherly kind of thing where he's concerned and worried about her. And uh, he lets her crash there until, basically she wants to go home to her her family and stuff like that um and then you learn her reason for running away and it, it's a whole fucked up sad thing that occurs but yeah <coughs> sorry my throat's getting a little dry let's wrap this up that's some quick moving on from that one we are going to talk about tokyo revengers also in a tier so Tokyo Avengers is apparently 24 episodes long. We're only about halfway through currently for me. It is a interesting concept where basically you can time travel by shaking this one guy's hand. It makes no sense. So the main character, if he shakes this, uh, this, this one individual's hand, he's able to go back in time like 10 years, 20 years. It's a certain amount of years, right? But it's like a set amount. So like it's 10 years ago today. And then if they were to shake hands tomorrow, it'd be 10 years ago tomorrow, right? Um, so it's like a flat 10 years. So they can't just go back in time to the same time every time. As time goes forward, they have to keep going forward in time, right? So uh, I guess a better example is currently it is July 4th, 2021, right? So if they were to shake hands and go back in time to say July 4th, 2010 that would happen and then if he spends a day in the past and comes back by shaking the, the guy's hand in the past it is now july 5th 2021 so time goes forward no matter which year or past or present he's in that's what happens okay um and during this time the guy is taking care of his body as he's older and whatnot and all this kind of stuff um, but essentially, the story is what really gets you. So, the main character, he's on a journey to save his middle school girlfriend from being killed in the future. So he goes back in time to stop the founding of this criminal organization, and that's basically how it goes. Because uh, he was like a punk delinquent kid in the past, and he gets involved with a gang and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he, he actually runs away in his first life. And has nothing more to do with the gang or his girlfriend because he left. And then, like, in, in the present time, he just sees a news article or a, a news on the television where his 
um, ex-girlfriend died in the present day. And he's like, oh shit. And um, he like gets sent back to the, the, the past, right? I forget what triggers him going back to the past the first time. Um, but essentially he goes back to the past and, you know, flips out and crazy stuff happens. And uh, he ends up trying to rescue or change the events that led to his ex-girlfriend's death. Um, because he still loves her and all this kind of stuff. It, it's a very cute, very sweet... Sh <laughs> no, no, no. It's not very cute. There's a lot of fighting, a lot of blood, a lot of, like, life and death situations. But it's a very cute reason for why the show exists, which is him trying to go back and save his girlfriend and his friends and all this kind of stuff from happening. Um, so, yeah. All in all, excellent show. All right. Moving on to the next one. I really didn't want to do this. It really hurts me to have to put So I'm a Spider, So What in A tier. If it was not for the last episode, it would have been an S tier. But here's what they did in this, the, the second half of this season, ladies and gentlemen. If you remember from last season's anime recap, So I'm a Spider, So What was my number one anime of that season. This time... It's not. This time, they decided to, at the end of this season, I don't even know if there's going to be another season, but at the end of this season, they had a huge battle take place and then not finish the goddamn battle. So you're just left, oh, I wonder what happened. Guess I'll probably never find out, or if I do, it's going to be in a couple years when the next season comes out. Annoying. Bad. Horrible. But anyway, up until the last, like, episode, um, it's pretty much a continuation of the last season. Unfortunately, in my opinion, it focuses a lot on the non-spider characters. So while the spider gets more OP and levels up a lot and fights more things to gain more strength, we learn a lot more about the world and why they got reincarnated. Towards the end of the season, it starts to make a lot more sense about what's happening, the timelines that are going on, because throughout the entire series, we're seeing, like, two different times happening. We're seeing, like, a past and a present, right? But I don't like how it ended. It pissed me off. Meh. If there isn't a second season, the anime's bad, okay? Like, maybe the story, like in the manga, is good, but the anime's bad. It, that's just how I, I gotta play it. Like, it does not end on a good note. It's just, hey, some stuff happened. Like, okay, but what about that battle we were just seeing in the past episode? We just gotta ignore that? Yeah? Because there's still, like, a huge gap between what this happens and, like, that happens. And, like, yeah. I was not amused, <clears throat> to say the least. Okay, everyone, are you ready? Are you ready for the S-tier anime of this season? Honestly, I was expecting one of these. The other two, sleeper fucking hits. Holy shit. The first one I want to talk about is, if I can find it here, right here. All right, it's Jose, the Tiger, and the Fish. It's a movie, but it is definitely worth mentioning. I didn't even know about this show. I just saw it come up on my radar, on the, on the site I watch anime on, and I was like, no, no, no. I saw it on Twitter. Someone said something on Twitter about it, and I was like, okay, I'll watch it. It's a movie? That sounds fine. This is the best romance anime this season. Hands down. Sure, it's a movie, but it is beautiful. And it is probably going to fucking make you cry, too. So it's about a girl in a wheelchair named Jose. That's not her real name. She just kind of goes by that. And um, a guy whose name I forget because I'm bad with guy names. Um, who is like a... Uh, he, he's a diver or like a dive instructor kind of thing. Or he's like training to become a dive instructor. I forget what. He works at a diving company and goes diving and like takes pictures of fish and stuff like that. And just the whole thing from how they meet, to their interactions, 
and to their, you know, budding relationship. It's all just really cute and adorable, and I loved it. It was amazing. It, uh, it definitely deserved to be S tier, and you should definitely watch it if you have any, any love for romance shows. Like, you will enjoy it, okay? Especially since there's, like, such a, a weird dynamic between... Ah, excuse me. A weird dynamic between the characters and uh, what kind of what's going on. Because, like, I mean, she is in a wheelchair. She can't, of course, go swimming, do much. She rarely leaves the house. He is a diver who dives, swims with fishes, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. And uh, I really want more people to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, check it out. The next one. Oh my god, this one. I'm of course talking about Shadow House. Shadow's House was insane. So, the reason this gets S tier is because I did not expect any of this to happen. So, in the beginning, I had no idea what was going on with this show. I was like, is something going to happen? This seems really, like, sketchy and purposefully lacking details. But nothing ever happens in the beginning. It's all just cute and kind of creepy, but it's, like, mysterious. Like, it, it seems like a normal slice of life at first. Because it's about, um, basically, the, these things called living dolls, which is what Emilico, uh, Am Emilico? Yeah, Emilico. Uh, Emilio? Uh, fuck, oh my god, I can't pronounce her name. Um, the blonde-haired girl with the, 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 the outfit there in the thumbnail, you can see it. Emilico. 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 Damn it. She's a living doll, and they're essentially servants and faces to the shadow people. Um, her master being Kate. And essentially what they do is the living dolls live in a room that's like off to the side of their, their master's room. And they come in, they clean the room of suit, or soot, whatever you want to call it, the day. And then basically attend to their master's you know needs. And then they go back and go to bed. Um, later on, they end up going out into the mansion and doing cleaning. Um, as well, and stuff like that. But uh, essentially, the, the shadow masters are like soot creatures. Um, if they're anxious or just in general, they just like emit soot. So anything they touch gets a little sooty, gets a little dirty, and it's the living doll's job to basically clean it up. And as well as when the shadow master is going out and about, the living doll goes with them and stands next to them and mimics their behavior and stuff like that. So if the master should be smiling, the doll is smiling because they, uh, the doll is the master's face, essentially, because you can't tell uh, facial like expressions in shadows. You can with the living doll, though. And so that's kind of what their, their job is and what they're training to be. Um, if it was just that, just like a weird slice of life with a, a living doll and a... Uh, a soot master or a shadow master um, kind of dynamic. It would have been A tier because it was interesting. But the ending pushed it to S tier, y'all. So, I cannot explain much about this without spoiling it. And that is the worst part is that I cannot express why this show is so good without spoiling a bunch of stuff. Let's just say, in like the last four episodes, shit goes down. There is a huge, huge bombshell that gets dropped near the end. And suddenly, everything just snaps into place. It all makes sense, and you're like, holy shit. No way. This is what's been going on the whole time. It is insane. It goes from being a slice of life 
to an action mystery and sets up perfectly for a season two, which, oh my god, I hope there is. Because it was brilliant and I, I need more. Like, this show needs a second season. I did not expect to be like this into the show, but as time went on, I went from, you know, watching this first to get the, because it comes out on, I think it was Saturdays when there's a lot of other shows. And so what I would do is I would just pick the shows that I'm less interested in to get those out of the way first and save the better ones for last. It went from being one of the first shows I watched to being one of the last shows that I watched. And uh, it was like, I cannot wait to see what happens next because it was just so crazy what happened to it. Um, but my God, my God, y'all. Check out Shadow's House, please. Get those ratings up so a second season is more likely. Ah, oh, holy shit. I need it. All right. I know you can see that smug smile down there. Down there, the last one we're talking about. Oh, yeah, you know who that is, don't you? Yep. The last show we're talking about, and my favorite of this season, the best one of the season, also in S tier, oops, is. Dun, da, da, dun, please don't bully me, Nagatoro san. Or, if you're one of the. Uh, people who was watching like a non-Japanese version where they renamed it to the please don't toy with me Nagatoro-chan because they didn't want to use the word bullying because people are fucking stupid. That's what it's called. So whether it's please don't bully or toy with me Nagatoro, whichever one you're looking at, it's a beautiful show. It's definitely the best and most memorable show this season. Um, most specifically because of Nagatoro herself being just out there and just the, the, the internet loving Nagatoro and stuff like that. All the, the memes and the, the crazy shit that, you know, you see online about it. So she's definitely going to live on for a while here. Um, but some people, of course, aren't going to like it because of the, uh, the bullying nature of it. But let me tell y'all now, if you're staying away from this show because of bullying let me tell you the real bullying only lasts like an episode or two in my opinion and that's coming from someone who has in the past been bullied as a kid now after that it mostly becomes Nagatoro just being embarrassed and using bullying as an excuse to be with the guy and get reactions out of him while trying to hide her own embarrassment. And, uh, you know, as the show goes on, it really becomes more of a, uh, a romance show than anything, where Nagatoro's uh, basically a tsundere, and it really shines towards the end. Like, when she's actually genuinely being, like, nice, or, like, she's embarrassed, it, it's positively, like, adorable. And, uh, like, when she's being a jerk, it, it's really, really obvious that she's doing it to, like, hide her embarrassment. Like, the main character will say something, like, actually smooth. And, uh, she'll, like, blush for a moment and then start, like, picking on him again because she's like, Oh, no! Oh, no! He said something nice. Like, he called me cute. Oh, shit. I better, like, call him a creep. Hey, creep. Hey, creep. Ooh. And, like, that's, that's essentially what it boils down to. Like... It's, it's adorable. Basically, it, it's the story of Nagatoro and her senpai, who I think you only ever hear called senpai. I don't think his name's ever mentioned. Not that I would remember his name anyway, because he's a guy. But uh, it's their adventures in school as the two of them grow closer over time and all that good stuff. I have one bad thing to say about this show, and that is that it ended. I really wanted more. <laughs> I would watch more. If there's a second season of Nagatoro Chen, I will watch it. Because I... I really like seeing characters who are, like, mean or tomboyish or whatever being, like, 
really cute and girly. So it's really cool to see like Nagatoro being all like tough and like athletic and then also being like, oh shit, he called me cute. I'm going to blush and like freak out about it and uh, that kind of stuff. It's, it's really, really cute and that's why I like it. Yeah. Also, I swear to God, wasn't there like a promotional trailer for this where Senpai like is in like a karate outfit or something and like takes this guy's arm and like throws him over on the ground while like Nagatoro and the others are watching? That never happened in the show. Am I misremembering? Is that something else entirely? Was that a, a page from the manga that I saw? But I swore, like, I saw some sort of, like, teaser trailer or something where that occurred. And I was always waiting for it. And I was like, hey, so when is Nagatoro going to start teaching Senpai some moves so he can actually do this? Because that would be a really cute scene to see. And it didn't happen. I don't know. Yeah. Sad. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, my mouth, my throat, it's all kind of dying right now. So we're going to go ahead and end things here. Um, but yeah, take a look at my, my list here. Check out, honestly, I'm going to recommend anything in S&A. Um, everything being lower, you can do with your discretion. Uh, but for the most part, when we're talking memorable shows, we got Nagatoro, we got Shadow's House, uh, Pretty Boy Detectives was kind of memorable. Not that I can remember the characters. So I'm a spider, so what? Alice from uh, Combatants Must Be Dispatched. And, uh, yeah, those are the only characters that I can really remember standing out. Um, the only ones that I'll remember at all. Every other show, by this time next month, I will not remember them at all. Except for, of course, uh, Tokyo Revengers and Eden Zero, which I'm sure are going to continue running. Also, um, to, e to the Eternity, or To My Eternity? Whatever the hell this show's name is. I already don't know the name of the show. <laughs> really tells you how much care I have about that show, doesn't it? But yeah, just for the, uh, the interesting art styles and stuff like that. Like, honestly... My first opinion of Pretty Boy Detectives was going to be D tier, or I was going to drop it. But I'm surprised I made it to A. That's all. So yeah, definitely check out any of the shows that I mentioned. Um, they were all worth the watch, other than the ones that I dropped, of course. Um, definitely watch any in S. Maybe watch some of the ones in A. If you're bored, watch the ones in B. And if you're, like, forced to, watch the ones in C or D. But, uh... Other than that, everyone, <clears throat> I'm going to end things now. And uh, this next season of Summer Anime is already starting to come out, and there are some really good ones. And so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing, and it's proving to be a much better season than this one was. So I'll catch you all next time I discuss some anime. Until then, everyone, bye for now.